what we have seen in the previous discussion that is what are the advantages of a globe so globe has certain limitations of also globe is a miniature form to represent our earth so globe can be useful when we want to study the earth as a whole but when we want to study only a part of a earth say uh, we want to know about our country the states district town or villages then the globe is of little help so in this scenario now we use maps so what is a map a map is basically a representation or a drawing of earth surface or a part of it drawn on a flat or planar surface according to a scale now it is somewhat impossible to flatten a round shape completely so there are certain methods to do it so we find that maps are useful for us for various purposes one map shows a small area and a few facts some other map may contain as many facts say as a big book so when many maps are put together we get what we call as an atlas so atlases are of various size measurements drawn on different scales so map provide more information than a globe so there are there are different types so let us see uh, some type of maps which we generally use first is our physical maps so the maps showing natural features of the earth like the mountains the plateaus the plains rivers oceans these are called physical or relief maps so physical maps or relief map then political maps those maps which shows cities town villages and uh, different uh, countries and state of the world with their boundaries these are known as political maps then a map showing certain theme thematic maps some map they focus on specific information such as say road road maps only showing roads or rainfall maps only showing depicting the rainfall at a particular area the map showing distribution of forest industries these are known as thematic maps because they are based on certain themes so suitable titles are given on the basis of information provided in these maps so there are three components of maps first is distance then the direction and the symbol so the maps are pol physical map political map and thematic map these are the uh, three things we discussed but there are various maps the there are chloropleth map there are so many maps actually so what we said there are three components of maps distance direction and symbol so let us talk about the distance so maps are drawings which reduce the entire world or a part of it to fit on a sheet of paper you can also say maps are drawn to reduced scales but this reduction is done very carefully so that the distance between the places are somewhat real so it can only be possible when a small distance on a paper represent a large distance on a ground therefore a scale is chosen for this purpose so scale is what scale is the ratio between the actual distance on the ground and the distance shown on the map for instance the distance between your school and home is say 10 km so if you show this 10 km distance by say 2 cm on a map it means 1 cm on, on the map will show how much 5 km on the ground so the scale of your drawing will be 1 cm is equal to 5 km therefore scale is very important in your map any map you are talking about the scale becomes very important so if you know the scale you will be able to calculate the distance between any two places on a map so when a uh, when large areas like continents or countries are shown on a map then we use a small scale map for example 5 cm on the map it can show up to 500 km all on the ground this is called a small scale map and when a small area like your village or a town is to be shown then we use a large scale map that is say 5 cm on a map it may just represent 500 meters only on the ground so this is called a large scale map so large scale map gives us more information than the small scale map let me exemplify this see this is your school and this is your home now the distance between your school and home is say 10 km now you cannot show 10 km on a paper so you have to reduce the scale say this 10 km you represented by say 2 cm now this is a map this is your school this is your home now you represented this line just by 2 cm 
So the two centimeter on the map is representing actual distance of ten kilometer. So what is the scale? Scale is the ratio. Ratio between the actual distance divided by actual distance divided by the the distance shown on the map. So this is actual distance and this is a map distance. So actual distance is what ten kilometer and map distance is what two centimeter. So this is the scale. This is the scale of map your map. So it can be a large scale map. It can be a small scale map. If you want to say cover whole of India, say this is all India. Now this is India. Now if you want to represent a country, then you cannot represent because this is a very huge, huge area. So here say five centimeter, you represent by five hundred kilometer. But when you are representing only your your town, so it's very small. Say the the population is say ten thousand. So this this area. Here you can represent your house also, your neighbor's house, some river, etc. Here you can represent this, say, five centimeter by five hundred meters. See the difference. Therefore, this map is called a small scale map, and this map is showing large scale. It is a large scale map. That is why it has more information as compared to this map. Now we come to the second thing, which is the components of map. The second is the direction. the map most map contain an arrow marked with a letter n at the upper right hand corner you will see that so this arrow shows the north direction it is called the north line so when you know the north you can find out the other directions also for example if you know north you can find out east west and south so there are actually four major directions four major directions which are north south east and west if you see this figure 4.2 then this is north east west south so north south east west and the in between is north and east so this is north east this is south east so south east this is west and north so north west and this is south and west so this is south west so these they are called these north south east west these are called as cardinal points cardinal points the other four intermediate directions these four which i just told you and these are uh, north east south east south west and north west so we can locate any place more accurately with the help of these intermediate directions also so uh, we can find out the direction from the figure this one i'll just show you the direction of the community center the playground from vikas house the direction of school from shops so we can find out the direct direction of a place with the help of a compass also so this is this is an example of a compass so what is a compass compass is an instrument used to find out main directions so the needle the magnetic needle always points to north south direction so this is actual north and south so what we are suggesting here is so this is a figure now we have a north here we have a proper direction north so if you need to find out any of these say take one of the direction of the community center the direction of the community center the playground from vikas house now where is vikas house this vikas house the direction of community center is like this so we from vikas to community center it is in north direction right it is in direct in this direction then we take the direction of school from shops so these are shop this is school and this is shop so when you take this direction it becomes say this is north south then is east west so this is in west direction this is in west direction and then we just talk about the compass then we have symbols symbology is very important when it comes to maps so this is a third important component of a map it is not possible to draw a map the actual size shape of different features such as building roads bridges trees railway lines or a well we cannot draw them they are very big so they are shown using certain letters or say shades colors pictures and lines so these symbols gives a lot of information in a limited space So with the use of these symbols maps can be drawn easily and they are simple to read so even even if you don't know the language of an area and therefore cannot ask someone for directions you can collect information from the map with the help of these symbols because symbols are known to every one of us so maps have a universal language that can be understood by each and every one by all so there is an international uh, agreement regarding the use of these symbols and these are called conventional symbols traditional symbols or conventional symbols so some of these conventional symbols are shown like this see 
in order to show railway line if it is a broad gauge we use this if it is a meter gauge we use this if it is a railway station we properly write rs this is a metal roll this is a unmetal roll this is a international say boundary we are talking about this is international boundary state boundary and this is a district boundary this is a river well tank canal bridge temple then church mosque and chhatri this is post office pto is post and telegraph office ps is for police station these are settlements these are graveyards these are for trees and these are for grass so various colors are used for the same purpose for instance generally blue is used for showing water bodies brown for the mountains and for plateau we use yellow and green is used for plains then a sketch what is a sketch a sketch is a drawing which is mainly you based on memory and spot observation and it is not to scale sometimes a rough drawing is required for an area to tell whether a particular place is located with respect to other places or not you might have given someone the sketch of your house okay you can reach me by this sketch suppose suppose you want to go to your friend's house but you don't know the way so your friend may make a rough drawing to show the way to his house and such a rough drawing is drawn without a scale and this is called a sketch map so sketch is a rough way of showing not to be scaled an idea of some location then we have plan now plan is a drawing of a small area on a large scale so a large scale map gives lot of information but there are certain things which we may sometimes want to know for example the length and the breadth of a room which can't be shown on the map so at that point or at that time we can refer drawing drawings drawn to a scale and which is called a plan so this is a difference between a sketch and a plan so look look just have a look at this figure now in which direction is the river flowing what kind of road passes by the so let us see like this so in which direction is the river flowing see where is the river first you have to find out where is the river okay so this is the river and this is flowing in this direction so if you say north south east and west so where it is moving it is moving in this direction so it is southwest what kind of road passes by the side of village dumri so this is a village dumri so what kind of uh, road passes by the side of village dumri so here is a road if you see the, there are this is a road and this is a road so what is this road see it is a we have to go to the roads so let us see this one or this one which passes by here this is a railway line of course broad gauge rail, railway line is there but the question being asked is what is the which is the type of road for dumri this is the road so the road is this one which is a metal road so in this way we are going to answer these also right i hope you'll be able to do it because the chatri this say this is police station and this is pto there is a church there is a graveyard there is a school there is a temple there are trees and there are settlements here all these are there so i i hope that you'll be able to do this